All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Now we're going to turn it over to Martin Johnson. Um, Martin has a BA in geography, and he brought. He's the uh, vice president of the Monument Conservation Collaborative. Uh, Martin brings his knowledge of soils and groundwaters and mapping to MCC. Uh, we, uh, NCPTD has worked with Martin quite a few times at our cemetery conservation workshops. Um, I know he's working all over Europe, America, Samoa, most of the East Coast now on, on site. So we're happy to hear about some work he's doing in Kentucky. So turn it over to Martin. Step forward. Thank you. Uh, good, good, good morning. Um, I think we could uh, kill the lights or get it to appropriate level. I have the um, enviable uh, task of uh, starting this when everyone's ready for lunch. Um, however, um, as Jason just said, I'm uh, Vice President of uh, Monument Conservation Collaborative. Along with my partner, Irving Slavid, uh, we work uh, restoring primarily uh, historic headstones, but occasionally we get to work on uh, uh, very interesting sculpture and uh, monuments and the like. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the restoration of the, uh, the procession that never moves, uh, the Wood Ridge Monuments. They're located in uh, Mayfield, Kentucky, far western Kentucky, um, about 20 miles from the Mississippi River, in an area called the Purchase. Uh, so when you look at the map of Kentucky and you see a little jog down into what theoretically should be Tennessee, that is the area that, uh, that we're talking about here. Um, Mayfield, Kentucky, as um, Marilyn so, uh, was talking about in terms of community, is very rural. And the uh, Woodridge Monuments um, are really one of the primary um, attractions to the area. I don't mean to belittle the area at all, I just mean that um, people actually go to Mayfield for no other reason than to actually uh, look and see the, uh, the Woodridge Monuments. Um, these are some uh, scans and some uh, older um, postcards of the area. Um, the, what they really illustrate is uh, sort of a procession of how the monuments were aging over time. You can also see that um, you know, it's really quite well uh, shaded with some very beautiful old, as the landscape architects refer to, specimen trees. Um, and in fact, uh, one of these uh, specimen trees that you see the shade right there uh, is the reason why I, along with Irving, got to travel to Western Kentucky in the summer of 2010. Um, and uh, the last would be a, a photograph from uh, Walker Evans, who was there um, photographing um, in the uh, late 40s after World War II. You can also see, if I just scoot back, um, interesting fencing. That, that fencing is essentially the same as what was in uh, Walker Evans. Um, but that is the original fencing. Um, the River Ridge Monuments were built, um, started in 1892, finished in 1899. Um, and the colonel himself is the only um, uh, person actually buried in this site, in the, in the fault right there. Well, the rest of the monuments are um, essentially um, statues of his family, uh, his brothers, sisters, and uh, nieces. Uh, along with um, his dog, uh, dog and horses and uh, the dogs, I should say, and the animals that he left to hunt. Um, so let's uh, move forward. On January uh, 27th in 2009, an ice storm hit western Kentucky and for all practical purposes uh, obliterated the monuments. Um, there was actually um, only th four monuments that were not damaged. And really, in, in, in all honesty, I would say that really only three escaped total um, uh, without any harm. Uh, the, there was a slight little damage to one of the other uh, figures that we took care of. So I'll tell you that out of the 18 figures, uh, we, we worked on 15. Um, so this is the, um, a, a scan from a, a, a newspaper clipping, a uh, news, news article. Um, and this is uh, the oak tree, uh, which was about a 300-year-old oak tree that, in fact, the colonel used to um, sit under um, during the construction. 
uh, to watch the monuments being built because he actually um, was what, having this um, beautiful procession built while he was still alive. It started in 1892 and the colonel himself didn't die until uh, 1899. Um, this is the as found. This is um, how we found the, uh, the monuments in, um, uh, let me think, uh, we arrived there at the end of April. Uh, we did um, three uh, essentially week-long trips to the monuments uh, traveling from uh, New England down. Uh, they consisted of a trip in the uh, end of April into early May. Uh, we went back then in June, and then we did our final um, trip uh, in the uh, end of July in 2010. Um, what I would like to draw your attention to, if I could, is um, uh, this. That is one of the real puzzles that we had to deal with. That's uh, where the horse's head was. And um, the angle is, of this shot is not that great, but there'll be other ones. But it, it was as if um, the, um, a guillotine had come and just severed off the horse's head at one of the worst angles possible. Um, that sort of illustrates it a, a, a little better. You can just see that it just is a clean break along the plane of the, 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 um, of the carving of the roundness of the head. Um, this is another shot that just shows a different angle um, showing the, um, uh, the, the essential uh, destruction and disorganization. The plot itself uh, is uh, approximately 17 feet wide by 33 feet long. Um, and that's not a lot of space, um, especially when these are really lifelike statues on pedestals and there's a fair amount of them in that space. Uh, just more photographs showing essentially as it was. The um, Department of Public Works of the town of Mayfield uh, did a phenomenal job uh, gathering up the monuments, clearing out the, uh, the tree, the, the, the fallen debris, the detritus. Um, however, um, we, when we got there, we had no real, we had an understanding to a certain extent, but we didn't know exactly how many pieces and parts they were actually going to have gathered up, how many were going to be missing, and uh, really what we were going to do. And so we walked around and we, the first object of business was really assessing and making a game plan, if you will. Um, and it was, uh, it, was, it was quite a treat. Um, the three undamaged statues were the, uh, the, the, the Colonel's sisters, which are in the back row. Um, and they really um, had weathered quite well. This image, I, I, I have it in there because it really points out exactly how the, um, uh, the, the monuments were before we got there, how they were weathering or, or lack thereof, but they actually were weathering quite well. Um, and we had a discussion as we went further in, into the process in terms of cleaning. Uh, we obviously do a lot of restoration work uh, in historic cemeteries and um, often we, we do clean. Uh, we, we clean when we need to, of course. Um, but um, uh, when, we, when we go about to do a, a, a restoration, let's say in a cemetery of 400 stones or whatnot, and we're tackling 50 stones, if we were to clean the 50, the, the remaining 350 would um, really also warrant cleaning. And so in this instance, um, we did, as a further slide will show, we, we actually uh, did do the cleaning and it came out perfect and we felt good about it um, because the monuments themselves are in the cemetery, but yet they're not in the center of the cemetery, although they are surrounded. Um, they really stand off on their own. They're fenced and they are such a focal point that people actually, um, as I've alluded to, come from all over to actually just go see the, the monuments. Um, while we were working on the three separate trips, I, um, I guess it was me, I, I think Irving didn't want to talk to anyone at those times, um, I encountered a woman from San Francisco, um, a couple from Italy, and a gentleman from Israel, who all came to Western Kentucky to actually see these monuments. And, um, they also had no idea 
um, that they were in the, uh, had been damaged. This is um, how we found them again on our first trip. Uh, the, uh, the town, uh, the DPW um, folks, did a really great job and gathered up pretty much um, all the parts they could possibly find. And in the end, they, um, they did a phenomenal job. They, they, we can't thank them enough um, because all the way down, which a, a drive from New England took us a, a solid two-day drive in our work truck, bouncing along. Um, and uh, Irving and I were always uh, discussing the possibility of how much reconstruction we were actually going to have to do, what we would find. Um, they really um, did a great job. There was only one, as I go further in the discussion, there was only one um, a dog, essentially, that we really had to um, do some very creative rebuilding with Jan. Um, these are the various parts. Um, you know, you just all the little small fragments. This, the uh, um, previously mentioned um, a horse's head and uh, all the rest of the heads, the severed um, legs. <laughs> it, it, they really did a wonderful job. So um, the first thing we did after arriving was uh, go to the site, check it out, scratch our heads and go, well, what the heck did we get ourselves into? Then we went to the DPW and um, immediately set up a work table and started um, doing some minor cleaning. And uh, we actually had some uh, photographs um, that the um, town was able to furnish, uh, furnish to us. Um, and we started doing some uh, basic uh, structural adhesion that we could do, uh, that we would need to do off-site before we went um, on-site. Um, obviously, we used uh, gravity and uh, sandboxes uh, to uh, support the small fragments that we were able to put together. It, it, essentially, um, we had what we found was a large three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, and um, it, it was a, a, a really big puzzle, and a really, um, uh, it was a, a very enjoyable puzzle. Um, so off we went. Um, so th this process literally uh, was within um, about two, two hours of um, being on site. The next day, um, I should mention that first day we um, made calls because when we were on site we realized that we need a crane. Um, and so we, we, we hired and um, within a day a, a, a firm, a Dodge Neon, which is essentially a sign company, which I believe people already alluded to using in various restoration projects, um, the Whirly Gigs and the, the um, one out in, um, that we heard about this morning. Um, Dodge Neon came, and uh, the gentleman Howard was a phenomenal crane operator. And uh, so the next day, um, we were able to start um, with, our, um, with our restoration process. The other challenge we had, the, the biggest challenge, was where do we start? Um, there was a very large obelisk, and that's where we started. It was going to be the two largest um, items to, to move were the, were the horse and this obelisk. And not in this photo, and in putting together this um, presentation and also in our reports, I, I often found a, a, a gap, uh, if you will, uh, where Irving and people who know Irving, um, I know all the NCPT people and myself, uh, we are meticulous in our documentation. And this project, we also did a, what I feel is an excellent job of documentation, but there are certain times when we, um, just because of the project of, of us both being so involved in what we were doing, we realized, oh, hey, we never got a photograph of that. So um, we, there is a little bit of a lapse, and one of the lapses is um, when we actually use the crane to um, bring um, the horse, who is, uh, the name of the horse is Fop, um, because it's inscribed on, on it, um, back into place. That was uh, 
that actually taxed the, uh, the, the absolute limit of the crane. Uh, the crane couldn't get as close. It really had to, because of the, we are in a cemetery. Um, so it, it was uh, extended to the, to the point of really maxing it out. So it was really quite, a, quite, a, quite an ordeal. But um, other than there it sits, and all of a sudden you'll see photographs of miraculously it's back where it should have been. Well, uh, none of us got any photographs of that. Um, so I apologize. Um, you can see that um, we're, we're using uh, the crane to lift the, the figures back onto um, the pedestals. Um, we used photographs of those postcards and a couple of the old historic photographs to, again, place the puzzle and we were really able to figure out where, um, where things went and how they went. Um, in this photo, you can see that um, We've started the process of um, doing the structural adhesion to the various heads. Um, in this instance, um, you can see the crane ball and um, um, just mixing up some epoxy. The nice thing about the, uh, a lot of the uh, structural um, uh, adhesion that we did was we were able to use gravity, which was brilliant. Uh, where we were not able to use gravity, um, it became quite a challenge. Um, this was the, um, uh, again, I uh, just put in some more um, mortar. We, uh, we used the historic line-based mortar to re re rebuild the, um, the obelisk, uh, which was the tallest um, uh, item in the, um, in the site. And so we really needed to get that um, done. Also, um, out of frame, there was a large um, telephone pole um, which had an overhead light on it, and the wires were still up, and uh, we needed to have that removed before the second trip, so uh, because the crane wouldn't be able to, to operate. So that was one of the things that we had to have um, attended to. Um, this is the second day. Um, uh, the, I'm talking to the mayor of Mayfield, uh, uh, Arthur Byrne, uh, and then Brad Rogers, who is the, um, uh, the, the planner of the town, if you will, and then Howard's the uh, crane operator. And we, again, we're just talking about our, 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 the, the process. You can see the, um, the obelisk is um, standing proud. And then again, this, I apologize, miraculously, you can see the horse is back where it should be. <laughs> and how, how that happened was uh, really quite stressful. <laughs> Um, again, just basic uh, mortaring, getting things uh, into position. Um, and then came the um, moving the, um, the obelisks that were, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, figures that were um, in storage at DPW, we had to move them back to, to site so that we could actually put them back. Um, the DPW guys had taken them off the site, and the reason they had taken them off uh, was I believe they really feared that people were going to come in and uh, pilfer them, and uh, which could have been a valid concern. Um, so they really did a great job, and they were very willing to help us because uh, it was just Irving and myself, and without their help, uh, we w wouldn't have been able to do it quite as easily. Um, you see, we got strapping. We had a, a little more of a, a complicated strapping system. Uh, when the actual hoisting uh, took place. But during the hoisting, um, there wasn't a lot of time for uh, photography. Um, it, it happened, and, um, and there they are. They're, 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 they're back in, a lot of them are back in place. Um, you can see that this is the um, uh, telephone pole. Um, the actual wires um, are coiled up there, we actually had them removed um, so that the crane could um, extend out and we would all survive to live this tale and tell you about it. Um, on the next trip, we started with the structural adhesion, um, doing all the parts. Um, the legs and everything were um, on some of the statues uh, were uh, in place. Uh, uh, 
many of them we actually had to put back into um, into a bunch of pieces. Um, there's a factory there, clean factory there, and then all the parts. Um, on this one back here, the one leg was standing. Um, this one, I, the torso just, there was no real rhyme or reason to how the brakes happened, it all happened. Um, and I should also point out that over the course of the history of the monuments of the 110 years, there were other incidents of some fracturing that um, uh, had, 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 had taken place. And so we actually had to deal with some older repairs uh, along the way. Um, again, more, um, more images of the um, adhesion and the uh, clamping. Um, the, the vault, uh, which is uh, right there, is the resting spot of the colonel himself. There was um, actually not that great a, um, amount of damage to it, except for a large fracture along the top. Um, and you'll see in a future slide how we dealt with that. Um, clamping, again, getting all the figures ready. Um, it, it, it really required us to use tourism in ways that we um, um, st st stretch the imagination. Um, you know, we had to do um, various uh, creative clamping on surfaces that weren't um, well, rounded, a square clamp was going to be very, um, um, very difficult. So we had to really be thinking um, on our feet in terms of how we can get the proper pressure without the clamp sliding off without doing damage to the stone. Um, all the stones have, I, are, were Indiana limestone, uh, with the exception of the um, figure of um, the colonel himself, which was uh, Italian marble carved in Italy. And uh, so the stone actually had a very lovely um, uh, texture, uh, somewhat of a rough texture that really uh, facilitated the clamping and uh, strapping and whatnot. Uh, again, more, more pictures of the stages of the clamping, how we used clamps to then clamp from the clamp. Boy, that's a lot of words, clamp from the clamp, um, to, to, to get the, the proper um, tension um, without the clamp slipping off. Then we start dealing with the uh, issue of the horse's head. Um, how we, um, this, this really was a, a we, we spent a fair amount of time talking about this one. Um, just given the uh, severity of the, and the angle of the break, uh, we realized that we really needed to um, pin it. Uh, so we drilled through two stainless steel uh, pins measured uh, to correspond for the holes to be drilled into the uh, horse's head. And um, we needed to make the holes slightly larger on the head so that um, the horse's head, I know because I lifted it many a time, um, probably weighed about two, 200 and around 220, right around there. Um, and it was, um, it was awkward to say the least. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see that in the space, in the confines of the space, um, Directing a ladder, which we did and had to do, was rather a challenge. We, 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 so, we, as we're typically working in a cemetery where there'd be one stone, occasionally we'll get stones that are, are you know, adjacent by abutting each other or within three or four inches. But typically, we're not working in a space that really was so confining in that you actually needed to plan out your move three or four steps ahead. Um, so here we are drilling, um, and it was rather arduous. So we, we took turns doing it um, because we, we um, had to use a conventional drill, not any um, type of hammer drill at all. Um, the Indian limestone was rather tough, and the, the angle of the attack was uh, really important to keep it at a, at a precise angle. Um, we then um, went into the, the cleaning. We had a day of cleaning um, and got everything ready. And, and during this process, again, um, it was one of those days that I don't know why photography didn't happen. It may have happened just due to the fact that we're 
just really wet. And also, um, it was one of these days uh, in being New Englanders, we're not completely used to um, uh, potential tornadic activity or anything like that. Um, not that there was, but uh, there were some very severe thunderstorms that um, either went to the north of us or went to the south of us. And uh, I was, uh, it was uh, like, whoa, they hit us. We were, we were, we were but you know, we were into it and we couldn't really stop. So just one of those uh, objective hazards that you have to deal with um, in the field. Um, this is one of the older, older repairs. Um, we just needed to re obviously remove mortar, get it good and clean, um, get it ready for um, the structural adhesion. Um, and this is uh, as, uh, as they're progressing. Um, the figures are um, being uh, standed up. The, the torsos are back on. Again, I apologize. I, I really thought we had more photos of the torsos being lofted through the air and brought down, but it was a, it was a rather um, precise and um, a difficult procedure. Um, uh, the, 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 as I alluded to, we we, um, we did the green of the legs on the first trip. The second trip, we're allowing them time to cure so that uh, we have them structurally sound before we put the torsos on um, and did it all in sequence, the, the farthest, because the crane came and put itself in the same position each time. It was really limited by um, other uh, gravestones in, in the site and it could really get to one spot and one spot only. Uh, again, um, moving the ladder, um, getting in position, um, doing um, the structural adhesion to the heads and putting them all together and getting it ready. Just some angles of the, the of, um, photos of the angles uh, of showing different uh, views of of the um, of the monuments as they're getting built. Um, the one cracked, the vault is uh, right there, um, which we used uh, we, we used a creative um, clamping uh, to put that back. With some, you'll see a photo. Um, this is of the uh, putting the head on the colonel himself, which was um, the most, one of the most difficult, the, the ladder was, looks fairly stable, but um, seeing as that's me, I can tell you that it really wasn't, um, but we had no option. Um, the horse's head, <laughs> and you can see that we, um, this was the real challenge, um, clamping and um, figuring out with the pins how we were gonna keep that horse's head in tension. And uh, so, uh, Irving and myself used a combination of um, very large strap clamps and uh, bar clamps and again wood shims and uh, then underneath the horse's head uh, you can just see that there's some wooden shims and there'll be another photograph right there uh, of actually shimming up and, and supporting it with a, 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 a brace uh, as, and we left it that way for a time. What we're doing here is we drill the hole into the horse's head and we're filling it with um, a cementous uh, grout uh, with plasticized agents, so, so a flowable grout to fill the void uh, because the, uh, the, the drilling of the, um, the head, as I already alluded to, was uh, uh, larger than the pins itself and, and to the point where we really wanted to make sure that the, it was all well, well sealed and, and there was no voids left in the head. And that's how um, the, the, the bracing looked um, in terms of um, uh, leaving the, head, uh, the horse. Uh, we actually left, um, left it braced. To, you can see the, the, a, a, a six, or actually it's an eight by eight on a two by four up to another bunch of shims with two, three. Um, then there were two clamps um, on either side and we also then had another clamp. Um, and it, it seemed to be, it, it worked very well, but it was really, a, how, how, the, how the heck are we really gonna do that? Because it, 
it really just wanted to, 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 to fall. Also, you can see the effects of the cleaning. Um, the, the monuments really, uh, really looked good relative to um, how they were before we got there. That's just a close-up of uh, the bracing. Um, just another couple more close-ups. Um, and that was uh, where we drilled to uh, use the cementus, uh, the, the portable grout. And so here was the uh, few other photographs. And that's uh, where we went to in terms of uh, the bracing um, for the uh, vault itself. We went to American Samoa, which I talked about uh, with Irving a couple of years ago during the break, um, which uh, we had a, a month of, uh, of, uh, of time off. We really wanted the, 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 the monuments to cure before we went in for um, the final restoration patches. This is the one figure that had the missing armatures. The legs were actually missing. We couldn't find them. So we did a, um, a complete rebuild with Jan. We used uh, the stainless steel and then rebuilt Jan around it to uh, form the legs. And then that's how it came out. Then the last, last uh, step would have been all the crack filling and the Jan patching. Again, um, for whatever reason, we don't have a lot of photographs of Irving and myself running around doing all the various yawns and crack filling. You can see that the horse's head came out um, pretty darn nice. The colonel himself. And this would be the last, uh, the last how we left the, um, this, the, the site. You can see that the fencing is all taken away. Um, the town was going to replace the fencing, put new sign. The the, uh, uh, the um, telephone pole, the fending telephone pole, was removed. Um, we're doing the plastic wrapping for the curing. Various other sites, uh, photos of the process of just doing the final uh, crack fills. Colonel himself, the site, and that's the the the, um, the, the two legs that we uh, or actually that we really had to reconstruct, and uh, that's how they sit. That would be on our last trip to the site. Um, the town put in, this would be our last involvement, the town put in um, a new, new fencing, new signposts, um, and unfortunately um, I was not able to scan to my qual the, the, the quality I wanted to have a final photograph from the, um, from the, um, from the final, how the, how the dedication, but uh, that would be it. So, thank you. For a question or two for Martin. Any question for Martin? Yes. Um, yeah, yes, actually, um, they, they do. Um, and it's actually, it is on the National um, Register of Historic Places. I, um, the, um, the actual, all the Indian limestone figures were carved in um, uh, Paducah by a local uh, monument firm. Um, and um, the, sorry, the, uh, um, I might need to put my glasses on for this. Sorry. Um, uh, Paducah Marble Works and, um, uh, w yes, the uh, Will, Will Lydon uh, was, a, uh, was a stonemason from the Paducah um, 
mar marble works. The actual, um, again, we don't know the name of the um, uh, cover of the colonel himself. He was done in Italy. That we know. So. Yes. Actually, it's um, it was two forms. It was all marble. Yeah, it was all marble. But you're right; there are two two distinct marbles. But it wasn't limestone. Yeah, just different color, um, and um, it was rather confusing because the, there are two two elements, Dennis, um, that one and that one, which were exactly the same. And when we first started putting it together, um, I think we had them somewhat. Re reversed and then we said wait a minute something's wrong and then we realized that the uh, because you could see the the color differentiation we just thought that that one would have gone there because of the yeah um again we were thankful to have the um the old um, postcards and then there was just one image and the, the postcards really were the key to getting that correct um, so all right, thank you. Uh, now we'll break for lunch.